Repenting, reflecting, reasoning, reckoning. The it is now 20 to 6, and on the huddle this evening we have Deborah Coddington. Hello, Deborah. Good evening, Larry. And uh, we also have from uh, whaleoil.co.nz, Cameron Slater is back with us. Hello, uh, Cameron. Hey, Larry. Now, I've got you both back uh, tonight because um, we've got two issues. One is the Ports of Auckland, Cameron, that you're involved with, and Deborah, the other is the sex uh, thing that you've done a lot of research into. But let's start, uh, Cameron, with you in the Ports of Auckland. Yep. Uh, I, look, I don't, wanna, I, you, I don't want you to... to give us any details of where you got this information but anyway they're well, being I won't anyway. no no ports of auckland are checking claims that leaked private employee information uh to you uh anyway it was the employee in my view who jumped into the spotlight mouthing off in the media and i see this as simply clarifying the facts and the fact is that this guy was treated very very well by the ports of auckland and, and recently as well with with his new child but but the 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 union really is crying crocodile tears. And the reason I say that is they've based this entire campaign around family, sitting by the phone, you know, we can't take the missus shopping, all sorts of things like that that they've based around saying that this isn't about money, it's about our family life and it's about our families. And then they've put up people, coached them, trained them to say the right things to suit that. You know, this fellow and even brought up his daughter and how she was in tears because she couldn't recognise her father. I'm sorry, he brought family into this, and he, and he, you know, it sounds harsh, but he lied by omission, and you, it's lying nonetheless, and that's the situation that we're in. How I got the information matters not. If it was, if the, um, if the information was coming the other way, and we already know that the union has done that, they've used leaked information that came from the ports. And uh, they don't seem to want an investigation into the leaks of documents that they've been using. See, Deborah, how do you see this? I mean, this guy got um, five months leave, 21 weeks, full pay. Actually, not a lot of employers uh, would do that, I, I, I think. So the Ports of Auckland are quite clearly a good employer. Well, leaving aside all of that, what, what this shows is that, you know, people have got to remember when they go and talk to the media... They've crossed a line and they have to take what follows. You know, we are mongrels in the media, let's face it. There's a saying for us, we're paid gossips. And, you know, he crossed that line and after that he has to take, he has to suck it up. He has to take what follows. And it does sound, as Cameron said, it does sound harsh, but, you know, he just has to... As I said, he just has to suck it up. He just has to keep quiet. He can't then wail because it might not go his way after that. You can't just have a nice, pretty story in the media and hope it all goes like that. There will come some harsh things after that. Right, see, that's the thing, Kim, and they like giving it, but they hate it coming back the other way. Well, it's the old you know, Dad's army saying from Corporal Jones, they don't like it up him. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's true, but, I mean, they're complaining that, that, oh, you know, it's a tragic situation. And it, it is a tragic situation, but it doesn't stop Helen Kelly using three uh, deaths in Tauranga to push their agenda. You know, if you want to go shroud-waving, then I'm sorry, there's going to be some holding to account. And it's just a tragedy that the mainstream media has pretty much been missing in action. And there's a reason why I've got so much traffic on my site, is they like seeing the other side. We'll come back in just a moment. Deborah Coddington and Cameron Slater with me on the huddle. It's coming up 16 to 6. Deborah, issue number two is there's a call for longer and stricter monitoring of a recidivist child sex offender who said to have rejected to any rehabilitation this is a Dunedin man Graham Purvis he's been jailed three times for sex offences he comes out on Saturday how do you view this we have a serial sex offender and uh, he has rejected rehabilitation I oh, look I mean this just goes on and on I mean these some of these people just do not get rehabilitated he is, you know, part of his release conditions are that he's not to go near a computer and electronic equipment capable of connecting him to the internet. How on earth can you monitor that? That's impossible. There's another one sent to jail today, Glenn Roderick Holland, uh, yet again taking disgusting photographs of young girls. I mean, he's in my book too. In 1997, Senior Sergeant Paul Harrell warned parents about this man. Uh, back in 2002, again, he was cited hanging around Epsom Girls Grammar and Primary Schools in Epsom, and police were mm. 
uh, warning people about him. I know that I dropped the ball on this, but it was expensive and it was draining. But we need to do much more in terms... We, want, we, we expect parents to, to look after and protect their children, but we're not giving them enough tools to do that. Here's the thing, Deborah. I'd be prepared to offer right now to, to give my skills and my advice and to team with yourself and perhaps a sensible sentencing trust. And we put together an online resource that keeps tabs on these people in an in a up-to-date fashion with uh, recent photographs of them. And we just simply start keeping tabs on them. But you see, Deborah, where is this, De Deborah, where is the sex offenders register? You, you had a bill. Where is it? I had that bill. It was drawn. And then when I left Parliament, it, it went into Rodney Hyde's name it came up again for the second reading, and I don't know what happened. It just um, nobody when it came up, uh, nobody from ACT was there to vote on it. I understand that there is renewed interest in it, and I'm hoping that uh, the National Party might pick it up. Well, I'm again sure Judith Collins it. will pick that up. It's it's certainly. Uh, fits I think into it's her. legislation whose time has come. The heat has come out, gone out of that. It's not nearly so controversial now. It's not the you know it's not a be all and end all. It won't protect everyone, but it might do something in terms of having a central registry with DNA, photographs, etc., where people can um, have tabs kept on them. Yeah. Would the pub yeah, the, here's the thing. Would the public have, have access to that, or would it be controlled? I would think the that might be a step too far at the moment, but yeah. at least um, it, they could go through a bona fide source, like a school principal, the police, the local policeman, a justice of the peace or someone. Uh, it could be user pays. Mm. And so that they and there would be a fine for misuse of information. I'd go further than that. The sunlight is the best disinfectant here, and we we've just got to stop people hiding behind, um, you know, name suppression. We've got to stop people hiding behind um, a whole bunch of you know various different methods that they use. I mean, we've got this recent case of the of the sex offender changed his name several times, employed mm. by eight or eight or nine schools in South Auckland. Mm. It's just appalling, and they're able to hide using the system. It, it, the, the reality is is that sunlight is the best disinfectant, right. and, the, and if you don't want to be tarred and feathered as a, as a sex offender, well, don't commit crime. Right. Uh, well, yeah, that teacher wouldn't have got a job if there had been a sex offender's register, I believe. Anyway, uh, just finally, Deborah, before we go, Dunedin Council, they're still meeting. Looks like they'll waive this 400k. They're offered, uh, they're owed by the Otago Rugby Union. Uh, looks like they're going to secure more games at the uh, new stadium, so a quid pro quo sort of thing. I mean, they wouldn't have got the 400k anyway. Do you have any view on this? No, I don't think ratepayers should bail them out at all. What sort of lesson does that teach them? Well, well I 100% agree with Deborah on that. Uh, ratepayers uh, shouldn't be funding um, people's hobbies, and um, it, it goes for the arts as well. And uh, it's just ridiculous that his ratepayers are now subsidising a rugby team. Yeah, but hold on. Let, let, look, that, the rugby union wouldn't give them the 400k anyway, it, it would seem. So isn't the best next option to get some revenue for the stadium by guaranteed games. I'm surprised they didn't have guaranteed um, secure games in place in the first I place. I think they'll still get me. the games, Larry. Yeah, you think exactly. so? They're not going to wind up and have not have a football team in Otago. I mean, it's, well, it's just legal um, hopscotch is what they're playing at the moment. There'll always be a rugby team there. Hmm. All right. Oh, yeah, there'll be a rugby team. Uh, the Highlanders, but apparently they um, they've given no commitment to that stadium either, and the, and this is the thing: the, the council is uh, is well, weighed under all this debt, two hundred million or something. What does that tell you about councils that propose building stadia? Yeah. All right. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Nice to talk to you, uh, Deborah Coddington. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you. And to Cameron Slater on the huddle.